Hello and welcome back to Live Drawing with Octopolis. I'm Brian Miller and today we are going to have a ton of fun. We're going to be drawing Victor Zaz from Batman. So total kick-ass Batman villain for us here today. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, good to see everybody out there. Thanks for joining me today. Very nice to have you with us. Hope everybody's having a good time. I see there's a few of you that are watching or listening that aren't in the chat yet. Um, that's okay. We know not everybody can hop on the chat, but uh, feel feel free to if you want to. We're all friendly here. But I hope everyone is uh, having a good, happy holiday season and just ready to celebrate, you know, because Christy and I, we've definitely been trying to make sure we stay in the spirit, you know, especially after this this crazy year that we've had. Uh, you know, it can be a little hard to, to get in the holiday spirit, so we're we're definitely making the effort. So hopefully you're having a good one too. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but we've been watching a lot of Christmas movies and enjoying Christmas lights. And, you know, this year may be different than years past, but we're, uh, we're going to make the best of it for sure. And have a good and Merry Christmas. And so whether you're isolating alone or with family, hope you're having a, a good holiday season too. But yeah, today's villain is, is Victor Zaz, or Mr. Saz as he's called in some of the comics. Um, and this particular one is from uh, the Dark Knight movies where he was played he was played by somebody special. I think we'll wait till Quinch Press gets here and let him uh, tell all the details. But I wanted to kind of just block in like a rough black mat around the outside here and kind of set the mood for this the villainous villainous Mr. Zaz. I've got a little royalty free Christmas music playing. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Hopefully it's, not, hopefully it's not too loud or too quiet. But this one should be a lot of fun today. But yeah, we've been going back and watching some of the Christmas classics. So we watched A Year Without a Santa Claus the other day. And we watched Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So we're just kind of trying to we're hitting all the Christmas greatest hits right now, you know, which has been been a lot of fun, been a lot of fun. So just trying to create this like rough, rough border all the way around. Really give it a, a little bit more energy, especially for our villain. Should make him look really good. So I gotta remind you guys that, uh, you know, like I said, we went back and watched uh, A Year Without a Santa Claus. Always one of my favorites, really. I really enjoy that one a lot. And uh, that Heat Miser and Snow Miser song, I think it just gets better every year. It really never gets old. I like that one so much. And uh, ever since I was a little kid, I liked that one. I just like to sing along and belt it out with him, you know? And then uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. You know, it's so great with the the Burger Meister Meister Burger villain. And what I never really noticed until this year was how you know all the all the kids in the Meister Burger village, all the, all the characters, their colors are really desaturated, and um, you know it's supposed to be that it's like a joyous or joyless town. And everything, but if you look at it now, it just it just looks goth, right? It's like this super goth Christmas village or something. So that'll give you a good excuse to go back and and watch that one this season, so you can see all the gothed out people, including the future Mrs. Claus, uh, in the Burgermeister's village. So there's your your excuse if you need one to go rewatch Santa Claus is coming to town. 
I'm going to continue to rough, rough in our background, and then we can start working on the character. Since it's a villain, we're doing to lots of shadow. He's in this like prison cell, so I want him to like kind of almost like fade to black in a few places. So should look pretty cool when it's all done. Let me know what you guys are up to for the holidays. I know we watched Holiday on Netflix, and I would I would rank it as like better than the your typical like Hallmark Christmas movie. So some of those are are unbearably hard to watch for me, but I thought that was it was pretty good. That the the cast was good enough in it that I enjoyed it quite a bit. Let's see what we've got here. Go to a little bit smaller brush. We'll start making some detail in here. But let me know, are you um are you done with your work obligations already? Or will you be working right up, you know, remotely or not, right up until the moment? Christy and I noticed that most of the gifts that we mailed out, a lot of them have not arrived at their destination yet. And we were reading that the post office is now saying that like, you know, something crazy, you know, millions and millions of packages probably will not arrive in time now. And we're talking things that were shipped um, before the December 10th deadline. Um, and even like priority mail packages that are, you know, guaranteed two to three day delivery that are, you know, they've been uh, out for 10 plus days now. So it's definitely going to be a, a lot of angry people at the post office this year, I think. Um, or angry at the post office. <laughs> angry with the post office? I guess that's better. Because they won't actually go to the post office and be angry. They'll just be angry because of the post office. But I've had pretty good luck with my actual artwork and things that I've shipped. Um, there's still one set of sketches that went out over 10 days ago that haven't been delivered yet. And uh, the tracking number says they'll be delivered today. So we'll see what happens with that. Hey, Quench Press, good to see you. Hey, Monique, good to see you too. Thanks for joining us. I hope you two are both having a very happy holidays. Um, I was just saying that Chris and I went back and we've been watching the old holiday classics and so we watched A Year Without a Santa Claus which is one of my favorites I love the Heat Miser and Snow Miser song so much and those characters especially because I think Snow's, Snow Miser looks like James Woods and that always cracks me up um, and we rewatched uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town which I hadn't actually seen that one in quite a few years. And what I noticed about that one was I was saying that all the people in like the Burgermeister's village look like goths. So that was kind of funny. Oh, hey, Catherine, good to see you too. Wow, like the gang is starting to arrive. This is nice. And don't forget, guys, tonight for Tiki Tuesday, we're going to have our ugly Christmas sweater party. So be sure to post your picture up on discord during tiki tuesday so today's sketch is for quench press it's a uh, victor zaz or mr zaz depending on which comics you read um and this is as he was portrayed uh in the dark night and i will let quench tell everybody why it's so special take it away quench press And I'm doing kind of like a like a film noir kind of take on it today. I really want to do something different and emotive. Get in there and 
really play up the sort of villainous aspect. So I thought it'd be fun to to just really go for it, you know. And let me know if the Christmas music is too quiet or too loud. I can adjust. Because my... Oh, sorry, Quench says, Batman Begins, not the Dark Knight. It's the Dark Knight trilogy to me. Yes, Batman Begins. Um, I still haven't found a new sound plug-in to replace the one that broke. So any music you're hearing is just picked up on my microphone. So it's not playing through the stream officially. Oh, thank you, Monique. Here you go. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think your subscription made me sneeze. Um, thanks for the resubscription, Monique. Remember, it don't cost you a dime to resubscribe to Octopolis with Twitch Prime. Boom, four months. Look at you. Way to go, Monique. Um... Thank you for the bless you, Monique. Uh, Quinch says, Zaz is portrayed in the movie by Tim Booth, who is the lead singer of my favorite band, James. That's right. So I haven't seen the movie, and I didn't even realize that. Um, you know, I don't think of, like, rock stars and stuff being in films. I know they are sometimes. It just didn't cross my mind. So I've gone all these years and had no idea until you told me. So I thought that was so cool. And um, I'll, I'll admit, I can't compete with Quinch Press on the fan level, um, but um, I know when, when the big James album, was the album called Late or was just one of the songs called Late? I don't remember, but then when that big album came out um, in the 90s, man, I just listened to that thing just over and over and over. I wore it out. If you can wear out a CD, I did. I don't know, <laughs> but it was just such, such good music. Oh, Quinch says, it's the name of the album and the song. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, oh, Catherine says, no Christmas music on my end. I'll turn it up and see if you guys, if the mic picks it up or not. But it's not playing through the stream. It's just kind of in the background here. Uh, Monique says, I'm at a total of seven months, but my, uh, as a subscriber, uh, but my streak is only four months because I missed the day. Uh, th oh, three months. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to like your unbroken streak versus your total. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. Quinch says it's the name of the album in the song. Oh, good. Well, I'm not. I, I couldn't remember. You guys know how bad my memory is. So yeah, I'm just gonna paint these bricks in behind him at first. If I was, if I had planned a little better, I probably could have um, just painted the background black and then like put the bricks in with white paint or something. But I thought this would be more more pure to keep it pure paper. Oh, when you need to hydrate, thank you. And a posture check. Thank you, Monique. Uh, Quinch Press says, speaking of the song Laid, uh, my other favorite band, July Talk, did something wonderful for me yesterday. They released a YouTube cover of Laid by James for me. Take a listen. And he provided the link. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Monique says, the subscription is the least I can do for all you give us. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Now, Quinch, can I play that over the stream or will we get in trouble? Should I just let everyone go to the link on their own? I don't want to get banned or blocked or anything. Especially now with the crackdown. The crackdown on Twitch streamers. All these new services and playlists and stuff are rolling out. Just because of that, it's so, it's so nuts. I guess it proves there's some savvy business people out there, though. They're like, oh, there's a... P 
People on Twitch need royalty-free music? You can pay us for that. For Tiki Tuesday, I've always used... Uh, YouTube has a... Google maintains a library for YouTubers. But they're going to change how that works, too. So everything's at, like turmoil right now when it comes to music for your streams and videos and stuff. And Twitch, I know you had mentioned wanting to add some text to this, so I'm leaving a lot of black area, so hopefully you'll have plenty of space to go in with like a white gel pen or something, and or maybe like a white grease oil pen. Have you seen those oil-based Sharpies? Those things are badass, man. They'll write on anything, and the colors are just outstanding. Like the opacity is just insane. It almost doesn't seem real. I've had a few collectors bring those to me when they want things signed now and you know comics that have like dark covers or crazy colors stuff these they just 100 percent opacity like right onto anything better than the metallics even which before i always thought were the best uh quinchper says i really don't know it's a live cover i doubt twitch would recognize it as the original july talk hasn't officially released the song oh, okay I'll switch over from the Christmas to it here in just a second then. We'll let 12 days of Christmas play and then I'll switch. Catherine says, does it take long to dry? No. Oh, you mean the oil, the oil based Sharpies? No, I don't think so. Nope. I mean, people are carrying these things around Comic Cons and getting signatures all day and stuff. So no, I don't think they take very long to dry. Not that I'm aware of. But I don't own a set myself. I've just seen them in the wild at cons over the last like year or two. And I always mean to pick some up and I haven't yet. <laughs> Quinch says, my son says Twitch will care. Yeah, probably. I know it's it's third parties that scan the, it's like the music industry that scans the feeds. And you know, these this software stuff, I mean, it knows that like I'm playing royalty free right now even though it's the same song that someone else records as a royalty version, they know. So, like, even our Gilligan's Island stuff, like, if I sing it, there's no problem. But if it picks up enough of the actual real track in the background, I get flagged. So, it's just really, their their software is good. Like, they know what's good, what's up. Catherine's like, ooh, I need those. I'll, I'll, I could probably find them uh, on Amazon pretty quick, I bet. I think if you just search like uh, Sharpie oils or oil Sharpie or something like that, they'll, they'll come up. Let me see. Yes, Sharpies with oil, yes. Okay, so this is just the first link, so you might have to look a little deeper on there, but I'll put it in the chat right now. There you go, Catherine. Normally, I really investigate things on Amazon to make sure it's like sold by Amazon and stuff, and I didn't look that deep at that link, so that may be a third-party seller or something, so, you know, don't order until you've checked it out. But yeah, the ones I've used, at least, that fans have brought have been really cool. Alright, so what's everybody's Christmas plans? Are we all staying home? Are some of you venturing out? 
Christy and I are staying home. So it'll be just the two of us. I think we decide on Christmas Eve we're going to make like individual homemade pizzas. That'll be a fun little thing we can do together on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day she'll make she'll make the whole spread, the ham and the scallop pineapple and all the goodies and stuff. So that'll be fun. Cuz you know, Christy doesn't mess around when it comes to cooking. Brings her A-game every time. But I saw that like, even with COVID restrictions, they said that like the airports are packed and people are traveling everywhere and, you know, it's family. I mean, gosh, there's, I can't sit on a high horse and blame anybody for what they do. I mean, I don't, I don't want to take those risks, but I guess I'm not really in a position to judge other people. Monique says, I'm working on Christmas Day. Oh, okay. So Monique, will you get some sort of a, a bonus or extra pay or something uh, for doing that? And will that be for like just certain one or two companies or how does that work when you're doing it like that? Inquiring minds want to know. No, 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 no. Uh, Quinchpress says, James broke up between 2001 and 2007 when they released their 2008 comeback album, Hey Ma. Tim had a line in an autobiographical song where he sings, made a, few, <laughs> made a few Bob and a new job as a serial killer. That's great. That is fantastic. So I was telling you guys about some of the Christmas movies I've been watching and stuff. What are you guys, what are you, what are you doing to get in the holiday spirit? Like Christmas Eve, Christy and I will watch Christmas Vacation and White Christmas. That's sort of our tradition. We always watch those two no matter what else we do. Like the season doesn't go by without us watching those two. But we're trying to fit in some others this year. I set the DVR to get Elf because I'm too cheap to pay for it. I'm like, I saw that it was on free like two different times. I'm like, okay, let's get that. That'll be, that'll be fun. Uh, Monique says, uh, I get a, I get a 250 pre-tax bonus two weeks ago, which was nice. Apparently 2020 brought the company back into the red and the CEO wanted to share it. Even with the bonus, I couldn't pay all my bills, but it sure helped. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. What do you guys think of this stimulus situation? Are, are, are we excited about the possibility of a $600 check in the mail that's just coming out of our own taxes anyway. Um, or do you think it's not enough? Like what's your feeling on it? Um, it's been such a rough year for so many people. My own instinct would be to say that it's not enough. Um, obviously people will be happy to have anything right now, but you know, considering how bad this situation's been for so many people it seems it seems sort of pathetic you know and a friend of mine pointed out you know out of the entire 900 billion stimulus you know only about 178 of that is going towards the stimulus for you know the average person so it kind of gives you an idea of how important or unimportant the average person is in the eyes of the of the government, right? So it's a valid point. 
Uh, Monique says, wish it would have been more, but 600 is better than nothing. Yes, I think everyone can agree to that. And the thing, you know, the thing everyone has to remember is, you know, I hear people, we don't need to give people $600. I'm like, look, it's not a gift. I mean, it's it's basically just a, a tax, uh, it's almost like a tax refund, but you're going to get it in advance, right? So, you know, in some way, shape or form, you'll be repaying that $600. It's not free money. So... Um, Monique says, oh, uh, Quench Press says, I finally watched the Christmas Chronicles 1 and 2, which I had not seen before, and then rewatched Claws. Yeah, I wanted to rewatch Claws. I, it, it popped up on Netflix their night. I was like, ooh, I like that one so much. I may have to give it a watch again. I think Christy watched it with me last year when it came out, or the year before, whenever it came out, but I may have to go give that one a rewatch too. We're trying to watch as many of the like classic Rankin Bass ones as we can. Because you know, you get older and you don't watch them and you forget. And sometimes it's it's good to go back and, and sort of remember the special things, the things that the joys of Christmas past, you know? Put yourself in better spirits, remind yourself of better times, and Try to make plans to make the next year even better, you know? I know that sound, and I can sound a little sappy, but that's how I feel about it. Every year I'm trying to like, you know, how, how to make the next year better. Um... Monique says, I won't get any premium pay for working Christmas. It's basically just another day. But I would imagine a lot of people don't want to work. So that's nice of you to do it. Your, your working might allow someone else to have the time off. You never know. Oh, it's the dreidel song. Catherine says, I would say not enough for most. Our apartments are so empty because people moving to cheaper areas. Oh, wow. Yeah, I totally believe that. I saw um, one of the people I work with in comics, and I don't know what his wife does or doesn't do, so I don't know their total income situation, but he's just a normal comic book inker. He's not, he's not a writer or a penciler, which are the ones that make the most money. And they sold their place in California. I think they were kind of in SoCal between San Diego and LA. And they moved to Texas, which a lot of people are doing, right? A lot of people are moving here to Arizona, but they moved to Texas. And he showed the photos of the house they got in Texas. And I mean, it just looks like a mansion, you know? It's gotta be five or 6,000 plus square feet. And it's on a couple of acre of land with a giant pool and a pool house and all this stuff. And you know, he's gone from living in a 12 or 1300 square foot place to this giant almost mansion or mini mansion, whatever you want to call it, you know. And you just think, you're like, well, yeah, duh. No wonder people are leaving California if, if you can work remotely. Um, now, the question then becomes, I already know from living in Phoenix that our real estate market is all going through the roof because there's so many people coming in from California. So... You know, maybe that will happen to Texas too, or is happening in Texas, I don't know, but I certainly understand why people from California would be doing it. And, um, I don't know what the end game will be of all that, but uh, it's definitely, it's definitely pretty crazy to say the least. Might have to go to a just go down a size on the brush here. We'll see. I want this to be really loose and like figurative. And I was going to use India ink, but I realized I didn't have any good India ink, so I'm using black paint. But 
We'll see how it goes. Uh, Monique says, hey, Quench Press, I had not seen either of those either, but I adored them. Yeah, I did too. I really, I, you know, I think the first Christmas Chronicles was a, it was a good timing situation. And it also was one of those, like, sort of better than it deserved to be. Like, it could have just been like a Hallmark style movie, but for some reason, the, the charisma of the cast and the story and everything it ended up being just a little bit better than that. And I'm glad they took their time with the second one and, and did what they did because I thought, I thought it was really good. Uh, Quinch Press says, I started watching Nosferatu season two today which has a place called Christmas land in it, but it's not really a Christmas spirit type of thing. Well, that reminds me that um, here in Arizona, there is a town called Christmas, Christmas, Arizona. And I thought about just, I know it's like a ghost town or whatever, and I thought about just driving out to see it, but apparently what it was, it was a mine. It was the Christmas mine. And so there's not really anything there except for just a, uh, just an empty pit mine so it may not be worth the hours and hours of driving to go find it but um, apparently at one time I don't know how many years ago they did have like a little Christmas village or something out there because people would come find it just because of the name and I was like oh it's a shame they you know can't can't still do that but um, I don't know Quinch you've lived here for a long time have you ever been to Christmas Arizona I didn't even know it existed until I just saw it on a map one day and thought, oh. And then when I realized it wasn't really a town, I was like, oh, I guess I won't go try to find that. Uh, Monique says, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those of us without kids work so the ones with children can have the holiday with their kids. Yeah, it's true, right? I will say that's one thing about comics that is lucky is I work a lot of nights and a lot of weekends, but most of my clients, they take off, you know, Christmas Eve through January 2nd or 3rd or whatever it is, you know, depending on how the days of the week work out. And so I do normally get my Christmases and and that's, that's really nice. Now, sometimes they'll dump a lot of work on me right before they leave. That's okay too, because, you know, it can work out how to get it done. It's not like a on a regular day-to-day schedule during that time. So, but I really prefer to use that time to either make new artwork or at least make plans and concepts of artwork for the new year. Um, so, that's what I'd like to do this this holiday season. Finish a few things, start a few things. I try to just like concept out enough stuff. Normally what I try to do is I like try to make enough Star Wars concepts for Epcot Festival of the Arts, San Diego Comic-Con, and then, you know, beyond, you know, holidays and Star Wars celebrations and stuff like that. But um, I don't know that I will be invited to Epcot this year. So um, I know they're talking about doing things a little differently. They may not be doing artist signings. They just may have some artists doing like uh, live paintings and things like that. And so... Uh, that that may mean that I don't get to go this year, but no one's really said anything to me one way or the other yet, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, you know, clearly I would be a little disappointed, but, you know, uh, with the pandemic and all, I, I've got to rely on them to make the best decision for everybody, you know. Quinch Press, redeem to hydrate. Thank you, Quinch. Uh, Monique says, my kid is going to Texas when her husband retires, and she said she is building a three-story house there that will cost less than California or Ohio. Wow. I mean, I guess, you know, Christy and I have some friends in Texas, but we never, ever really thought about it. Um, But, you know, I know their income tax situation is very friendly there and uh, some other things, and You know, in these times when more people are at home and more people are facing income insecurities or job loss or, you know, whatever it is, I mean, it makes sense that people are going to prioritize their home life over other things. And, 
and move to places like Arizona, Texas, wherever, you know. And, it, and who knows how long it'll take for some of these job markets to come back, if at all, and um, whether or not anybody will care about, you know, only certain jobs will need to work in person, so. Monique says, uh, did I miss the Stephen King mashup you did? Uh, I've been so absent, I wasn't feeling well for a bit, and I missed a lot. Yeah, um, I think I have it. Christy's going to deliver it to the person tonight, so let me see if I still have it over. Here we go, Monique. So it starts out with Pennywise, and then we move on to Cujo and Church, and uh, I just had to do the Shining Twins again because I had so much fun with them the first time, and then it ends with Christine. So they were inspired by the one that I did for you, but I didn't want to do like an exact copy of what I did for you, so I kind of changed it up just using the characters that they wanted, you know? But yeah, that was fun. I had so much fun doing all those different sketches for Tennis Junkie. And I really appreciate her, especially at the holiday time. You know, she ordered like five or six sketches from me and they were all big size and all full color. So that really helped, really helped make Christmas happen. <laughs> so that was nice. Uh, Quench Redeemed Hydrate, thank you. Quinch says, I have not, I did not know it existed. Well, now we've, I've moved, I've been talking so much, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore, Quinch. <laughs> but thanks for the hydrate. Oh, Christmas, Arizona, right. You've not been there and didn't know it existed. See, I remembered. Uh, well, like I said, I looked on a map, it doesn't look like it's worth going to find, but it was interesting to, to I, I want to find pictures of the little Christmas village that they used to have there. Because I think that might be interesting to see. Um... That's like they used to have the Christmas Village on the way to Las Vegas from Arizona. And we just stopped and had a look around once like a decade ago. And then it's it fell into disrepair. And then now it's, I don't even know if it's still standing. Uh, Catherine says, my family is begging us to move to Texas. They say we can move to Austin because it's blue. Yeah, that's funny. Um, A lot of friends of ours that are... are or on the liberal side or the democratic side or whatever you want to call it, uh, are going to Austin. Yeah. Um, Christy used to date a guy in Texas, and so she's a little burned down on Texas. But you know, clearly there's some some fiscal reasons to move there. And I also read that you know how like in Europe you can get like an Italian farmhouse for one euro if you promise to renovate it or whatever. I saw where some towns in America are paying people $10,000 to move to their towns. Um, and they're looking for, you know, educated people who want to come in and take good jobs. And obviously it makes sense. I mean, they'll get that $10,000 back the first year in taxes and stuff. So um, really interesting that, you know, with this people fleeing from uh, California and New York that some of these Midwestern towns are just coming up and being like, you know, you know, come, come move where we are. And that will change some of those towns ethnically and make them more diverse and change their politics and everything like that. I mean, you know, there's such a mass group of people coming into Arizona. You know, it has to be one of the reasons that our state went blue this year. Um, so, you know, you get a, a more diverse group of people and, you know, that can make a state change, maybe not change its politics or anything like that, but have a, a more balanced uh, outlook. So it's kind of interesting. 
Uh, Monique says, ooh, that Stephen King drawing was pretty neat. I'm sorry I missed it. Yeah, it was a fun one. It was a fun one. But I know you are so busy. Especially now that we know you're going to work the holidays and everything. Well, my holidays end January 1st because that's when... That is when the big Smithsonian project... I mean, it's officially started, but I kind of start that day. So I get the, the first... Uh, it's not really a script, but there's going to be eight pieces of fiction, and I will create an illustration for each of those eight pieces of fiction. And so I, I will receive the first piece of fiction on January 1st, and then I have to have my concepts and stuff in for that, I think by January 11th. So it'll be kind of a mad dash to get that going and everything. It'll be just be like trying to come up with the right ideas and also knowing that I have to do eight illustrations that all kind of have to tie in together for this big exhibit at the end, you know? So that's, that'll be a challenge. Like when I did the James Bond ones, which is what they like so much, you know, I sat and I did all of those at the same time. So it was really easy to make all of them look and feel cohesive together. Whereas this, I'm going to do one in January and one in February and blah, blah, and like, you know, that kind of thing. And so it'll, I think it'll be more of a challenge to have them uh, be cohesive, yet each one be original, right? Because um, you don't want them to just be clones of one another, but they all have to feel like part of the same family. So um, I enjoy those kind of challenges, but I know something like Smithsonian, there'll be a lot of different eyeballs on that. And so it's going to make it, um, you know, I think the big challenge will be to get the first one approved. And then once that happens, it'll be a little bit easier because, you know, figuring out what they like for the first one. And then you start to get more, hopefully more of a feel. Because when it comes to art, it's really difficult for most clients to verbalize what they want. And they don't really know sometimes until they see things. They, you know, when you're dealing with non-artist, um, it can be really, really challenging to get everyone kind of on the same page. You know, and I remember Christy used to be on an arts council for a city we used to live in. And, you know, they would vote on the art and approve it and all this stuff and fund the artist and the art would get done and half the city council would hate it. And she's like, but you approved it. And they, well, we don't like it now. And you know, all that kind of, you know, they, they read the, uh, the text for the, what the piece is going to be. And they have one thing in mind and then they see it and, you know, they say really rude things to the artist. Like, you know, I, I don't know. I can't tell you what I like, but when I, I can tell you what I don't like when I see it. And, I think that's true of a lot of people, you know, it's unfortunate, but part of it is very few of us get any sort of art education. I mean, there's no, there's no like music appreciation or art appreciation classes in the high schools or anything like that, you know? So how can we, how can we communicate about things that we don't even understand? You know, how can we have a common, a common language when, when it's never taught to us, you know? It just becomes like an impossible task. Uh, Monique says, I had a doctor's appointment last Tuesday and he gave me new scripts for my migraines. He put me on Amovig or Amovog and Ubro. They make those names up. Those aren't even real names. Uh, he wrote me a script for another one too and I'm not filling that one. Once I saw the cost of these meds, I finally understood why the CEO of our company has been uh, signing big pharma companies and trying to specialize in them. I roll. Yeah, I mean, it's we're the only the only first world country on the planet Earth that doesn't take care of its people's health care. It's ridiculous. It's it's inhumane and it's inexcusable, and it should be illegal. You know, Christy and I have traveled to the middle of nowhere in the desert with students. And from a sniffle to a broken bone, they'll be taken to the hospital and treated and released at no cost. Zero cost. 
right? And if a country the size of Kansas can do it for their people, then by God, the United States should be able to do it too. And the only reason we don't is because we let companies tell us that we don't want to or tell us that it's impossible. They can't change the system, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? We can change any system we want. After 9-11, we changed the way air travel works, right? And with COVID, we've changed the way a lot of other things work. If we wanted to fix this, we could fix this, but we do not. Our government and our companies don't actually want to. And it's the people who can least afford it who will suffer the most. And it's just outrageous to me. Quinch Press says, speaking of the stimulus bill, uh, 7500000 went to the Smithsonian for additional salaries. Maybe some of that's what's paying you. Well, I ain't getting that much, let me tell you. No, um, my understanding on the Smithsonian thing is that they're trying to uh, open some more like diverse type of things focused on women and ethnicities and roles in America. And uh, I believe that the Republicans were blocking them from doing that. And so I think just by calling it salaries, they can do whatever they want with that money, but I haven't looked into it to know for sure. When I say do whatever they want, I mean, pay those people without tying it to a certain theme, you know. <laughs> Green Lantern says, that's a lot of money. Hey, if it's going to art and science and all that, I'm I'm all for it. Uh, Monique says the Amovig shots are six hundred dollars each once a month, and the other one is nine hundred for a box of ten pills. That's ninety dollars pill, and the other one was over four fifty. Even with good RX, they could only get it for two ninety one. Jeez, gosh, Monique, that's just it. Really is pathetic. It really is. You know, my father had heart issues and kidney issues and stuff, and uh, man, you know, luckily he had remarried and she was a pretty tough lady and she'd go to bat with these insurance companies and fight them tooth and nail and get as much stuff paid for as possible, but it's, it's, it's an uphill battle. Crazy, crazy. Well, on lighter news, did everybody watch the season finale of Mandalorian? Can we talk about that yet, or can we not talk about that yet? Because I don't want to spoil it for anybody if you haven't seen it. Although I can't imagine you've not seen spoilers by now. Because they seem to be everywhere. Uh, Monique says, my doctor gave me savings cards for two of them, which brought them down to $5 for the shot and $10 for the pills for a year. So riddle me this, if they can offer the savings card that brings an alleged pill down, why are the insurance companies being charged? Right, only because they can, right? Only because they can. It's the same way as if you go into a dentist or a doctor and you tell them, you're like, hey, I don't have insurance, I wanna pay cash. Magically, the rates are lower than what they would charge your insurance company, right? Because they know they can. They, they know what the caps and rates are on those things, and they know that they can get away with it. And I'm not anti-physician or anything like, you know, I think if you go to college and become a doctor and all that, you should, you're in, entitled to whatever salary you can earn. But at the same time, you know, the medical profession is supposed to be out saving lives. And if we price everything where only the wealthy can afford it, then you're only saving the wealthy people's lives. And that's not cool at all. Uh, Greenlander said, I saw it at work. I hollered and clapped a lot, really hard. <laughs> Uh, Quinch Press says, I know if you didn't watch it right away, you were screwed. The damn media was posting articles with spoilers and headlines. I know, you know, usually 
I don't get to see it for one or two days until after it comes out. Luckily, Christy did not have tennis that night and we actually watched it on Friday night. But even then, so many people are watching it Thursday at midnight or whatever that, you know, I had already seen a few spoilers. Luckily, not the big one, but I guessed at it pretty quick. But yeah, I know. There's just no, no avoiding it anymore. You know, I remember when things like um, uh, the M. Night Shyamalan movies used to come out. The whole idea was to keep the secret, right? Don't, don't let anyone know. Let them discover it for themselves. And now it's like everyone has to show how cool they are by like being the first person to watch it and spoil it for everybody else, you know. Like, look at me, look how cool I am. I know the thing. It's like, guess what? We're all gonna know it in like 48 hours. You, you're not that cool. And the people that made the show, they've known it for months. <laughs> yeah, it was a great episode. I, I loved it. I, I definitely had a, a couple moments where I might have almost cried. So it was, it was really, really good. Uh, Green Lantern says, internet semi-spoiled day, day a friend said, watch it right away, so I watched it at work. Oh yeah, spoiled it for a friend, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hear you. Well, and a lot of the like groups and stuff have like no spoilers for 48 hour rules, but it doesn't even matter anymore because people are just spoiling it, like Quinch Press said, like in the headlines and stuff. It's just, it's kind of silly. Quinch says, I watched it at 3 p.m. on Friday. None of my friends spoiled it. It was more websites trying to get clicks with spoiler headlines. Ugh. That's even worse. Even worse. Green Lantern says, same thing with the big games to a degree. Oh, man, you know, Christy plays tennis, and nothing upsets her more than when you go to watch the tennis highlights, and as the match starts, they flash up the final score on the bottom of the screen for the match you're watching. You're like, WTF. Uh, Monique says, I'm hoping the next season of Ozark hits soon. The ending of the last season blew my mind. You know, um... Christy and I, we started to watch the first season and her parents live in the Ozarks and stuff. And uh, for some reason, we just had trouble getting into it. I heard that it got really, really good, especially in the second season. So we may have to go back and, and try to catch that one again. But we've been watching The Crown pretty faithfully. And I have to say, that's that's been really good this season. I know a lot of people don't like it because they're up to the point of like Princess Diana and they're dealing with things that people remember and or whatever. But, you know, if you're not, if you're not allowed a little outraged by history, then you're probably lacking some feeling and empathy, you know. Uh, Catherine says, for soccer, we have to turn off all the social media and tell the family not to spoil. Well, I know one person who even has like a piece of paper or tape or whatever that he covers like the bottom section of his screen where they do the scrolls and flash up the scores and stuff because it's just like everything gets ruined. Uh, 
Uh, Quinch says, I was only mildly interested in watching Happiest Season, but I saw a headline that made it pointless to watch, being that I was already on the fence. Oh, uh, I hate that kind of stuff, too. Speaking of which, I think Christy and I are going to start Dash and Lily uh, sometime. Because I'm, I'm def definitely interested. She seems like she might be interested, but... If we don't watch it together, I'll watch it because it looks it looks like it's my kind of thing. Um, Monique says the thing about the crown is they did embellish some things. It's not a hundred percent factual, so people are getting mad over stuff that wasn't as bad as they made it seem. Yeah, I get that. Um, I mean, look, I know that no one can know what those people said in private and that they're inventing dialogue and that kind of stuff, but. At the same time, they've come out and said that it is based on interviews and real accounts and stuff. And, you know, I think if it was 20 years ago, nobody would bat an eye at it. But because it's right now, you know, everyone's, if you're on one side of the discussion, you know, everyone, those people are throwing a fit about things. And, but yeah, I know what you're saying, Monique. Hey, Evan, good to see you. Hope you're having a very happy holidays. Um, Greenlander says, I'm still mad at IGN for spoiling Spider-Man PS4 in 2018 during an interview with no warning days after the game came out. Ouch. Ouch. I know. These companies, they don't get it. They just want the ratings and the clicks and the whatevers. Evan says, I'm doing good. Uh, Monique says, creative license is something people need to understand, but don't. Boy, that's the truth, isn't it? That is the truth. Well, guys, I haven't mentioned it in a while, but I will mention it right now. Um, and that is... If you haven't picked up my new Star Wars Celebration art, Legend of Lando, um, hey, go grab it before it sells out. Uh, I really want you to have it and, you know, get one for yourself, maybe buy one for someone as a gift, you know, hang on to it, give it to them later in the spring or something. Um, but don't let it slip through your fingers. You know, it's a Star Wars Celebration exclusive. I'm putting it in the chat right now. Um, those things are usually only available to people who go to Star Wars Celebration and this year, you know, it's open to everyone and I know it's bad timing with Christmas. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have the ability to, to grab one, please do. I certainly appreciate that. Um, and hopefully you, hopefully you'll enjoy it because I definitely, I poured my heart and soul out into that one and, uh, want to make sure all of you get a chance to, to grab one. And those are, those are scheduled for delivery in February, I believe. So. You know, if you order now, you don't have to worry about about it showing up at weird time or anything. Because I think they're going to ship all those out uh, towards the end of January for like a February delivery. But yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. But yeah, Christina, we finished up our Qbert School class yesterday. And we're wrapping up the last few comic projects for the year, so it's definitely looking a lot like the holidays. Think about it, guys. This is, I think this is our last live drawing of the year, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, this is the last one of the year. We'll be back, we'll be back on the 5th, but at least we have tonight. We have Tiki Tuesday tonight. And it's going to be our ugly Christmas sweater party on Tiki Tuesday. So don't miss that. Post your picture on Discord of you and your ugly Christmas sweater. And our impartial judge is going to pick a winner. And they will win the Tiki artwork that I draw tonight. So don't miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Drunken Christmas Tiki fun. I hope to see all of you there tonight. And that tonight, that will be our final live stream of the year. It's crazy. 
Luke's like, no way! Uh, Catherine says, so to fully understand Mandalorian, I'm watching all the movies again. I was shocked because Lando was in the original three more than Yoda. Uh, I can't believe he wasn't more popular. Um, yeah, I'm with you on that. Like, and I remember as a kid, Lando being really popular. And like, I grew up in rural Missouri, uh, not rural, in kind of between the suburbs and rural because we were so close to Kansas City. So like, I went to church in the inner city where I was like one of the only white kids, but I lived kind of out past the suburbs where it was almost all white kids. So I, I kind of saw both sides of, of America that way, the city and the rural. And, you know, even in my little town where there was not much diversity, I remember every kid thought Lando was cool. No one was like, you know, anti-Lando because of the color of his skin. And now here we are 40 years later celebrating the anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. And I'm seeing all these sort of like racist and negative things about Lando online. I'm like, what happened to people? What happened to us, you know, to to get to this place where everyone, not everyone, where people can be so nasty and about things that they used to love and turn against the things that they love over what? Some sort of racial, geopolitical ideology that they only have, you know, decided that they wanted to embrace over the last four or five years. It's just sickening. Evan says, I will miss it. Hey, we'll miss you guys too. But like I said, we'll be back in the new year. But be sure to come tonight for Tiki Tuesday. One last time. We'll have a great time. I'll be wearing an ugly Christmas sweater. Hopefully you guys will too. You join me in, in that. It'll be fun. We'll get our tiki cocktails on. Um, Quinch Press says, figures, I have all this time off work until the 4th and don't have to worry about meetings or getting work done and no streams. Well, I'm not, and look, I don't have any planned. I've said, I've said a couple times that my plan is to catch up on artwork and stuff. It doesn't mean I won't get bored. You might not get a notice, but there's none, none planned until the new year. So we'll put it that way, none on the schedule. So, just never say never. But we all know those holiday things, you know. You start out, you're like, I'm going to accomplish all these things. And then you end up like sitting in front of the TV or something. So, you never know. You might get the notice that I've gone live. Anything could happen. Oh, thanks for the posture check, Monique, and the hydrate. Thank you. Uh, Green Lantern says, wait, what? There was Lando hate like that now? Yeah, man. Like, with my, this Lando art, I'm seeing all, not a lot, but a significant amount of, like, racist BS post in, in regards to my artwork and in regards to the character. And it's just, it's sickening. It's sickening. Especially that some of these people call themselves Star Wars fans, and they clearly did not learn any of the lessons or the messages in Star Wars. Um, yeah, it's it's sad. And I had been warned, I had been warned by one of the galleries, they're like, you are not gonna be ready for the reaction you get and you should consider uh, doing something different. And I was like, oh, you know, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. But no, they were right, they were right. They, they'd been there, they knew. They're like, it'll be an uphill battle. And I was like, my art sells out every time. People love my art. They're like, yeah, that's what you think. You'll find out. And I hate to admit they're right, but they were. It's really... And the thing is that those loud racists, they get online and they start shouting people down. And then that scares people away from the art and the post and everything. So it's just kind of, it's just, it's just pathetic is what it is. It is pathetic. I will say that I do, as much as I've complained in the past, I do understand now why some of the galleries are like, you know, like just, just do another Darth Vader. 
just do another Boba Fett, you know, that kind of thing, because they're like, we know we can sell it, and it's, no one's gonna, you know, no one's gonna have any outrage about it. You know, whereas if you pitch an idea for a Finn or a Rose or Lando or something, you might get a lot of pushback. Uh, Quinch Press says, I have a Nightmare Before Christmas Tiki t-shirt. Ooh, that sounds like a winner right there, Quinch. That sounds good. I think you're going to have to definitely put some, get your cocktail ready and post some pictures up tonight on Tiki Tuesday for that one, because that sounds good to me. Uh, let's see here. Um. Quench says, we'll have to do that one tonight. No sweaters. Green Lantern says, wow, like, wow. Like, the character's been in the franchise for 40 years. Yeah, I know, man. And I, all I can hope is that this new Lando uh, series... Well, I'd like to say it would help, but, you know, I think we're, we're in this situation now where people who believe certain things can tune in to only information that supports their beliefs, right? And so you can ignore the new Lando show. You can ignore characters who are people of color. You can, you know, you can ignore all those things that you, you may not agree with. And in your world, in your life, it just doesn't exist at that point, you know? And that's part of our sort of our new media culture is that you know, unlike the days past, we're not confronted with things that make us uncomfortable or make us question our beliefs or question our morals or, you know, any of that stuff. We could just, we can just run to that other media source and get fed stories that, you know, make us feel good about our choices or maybe indoctrinate people into even worse choices. So... It's very, it's very crazy times. Yeah, I've had people saying stuff that like, you know, Lando was a social justice warrior and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. So, you know how people have become. It's very silly. What do we think about this one, Quench? I'm feeling pretty happy with it. I really, this is like... The way I had it pictured in my mind, this is pretty darn close. Let me know what you're feeling about it. Uh, Quinch says, I'd buy Finn art. Yeah, and like, even though Rose wasn't my favorite character, A, it had nothing to do with the actress or the color of her skin. And if there was the right piece of Rose art or Rose and Finn art or whatever, I would be a fan of that. But we're in a situation where enough fans shout out that they don't like this stuff and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where whether it's toys or artwork or whatever those companies become afraid to make that stuff because they either think well there's no market for it right which if you never release the product and no then no one can buy it so then you've proved yourself right there's no market for it um or they're afraid of that negative pushback and they're like well if we just put our blinders on and we just stick to, you know, Darth Vader and the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, keep a really narrow focus, no one will cause problems for us, right? And that's what a lot of business is about, is about how do we go about our day and how do we make money without offending or upsetting anyone and without getting shouted down. And unfortunately, some of these racists have the loudest voices and they'll, they will manipulate, scare, whatever you want to call it, these companies into doing less and less and less and less of diverse characters. So it's a bad situation. Ultraman says, your Lando print looks awesome. I like how you gave Lobot some FaceTime. Oh, thanks, man. I, I Look, like I said, I poured my heart and soul into that. I did that art about a year ago because Celebration was supposed to happen in the spring. Um, and I've had to sit on it all this time and not share it with you guys. It's been really tough because I'm, I'm really proud of it and I'm glad you like it. Um, and so, you know, thanks to everyone who's gone ahead and made a pre-order. Um, whether you have or you haven't, take just take a minute and just share it on your social media and let other people find it. Because I mean, that's the hardest part this time. 
is getting it out in front of people. You know, normally I'm at a show, I'm talking to people in person, I can show them the art. You know, this, they just have a little picture on their screen to see, so I appreciate it if you can share it. Uh, Green Lantern says, I loved Solo and Donald Glover almost stole that movie. Yeah, he stole the movie. Uh, I don't <laughs> I don't get people though. Again, the characters in the franchise for 40 years, yeah. Well, hopefully when the new show comes out with Donald Glover, people will remember why Lando was cool. And the haters will continue to hate no matter what we do, but we have to not be intimidated by them. So that's all we can do is I'll just keep making art. And if, if, if this one fails, it fails, but at least I, I saw it through to the end, you know, um, I know quench press is still on here somewhere. I'm going to find my white pen and sign this. And then we can, um, see about doing a raid. And some credits. Uh, Quinch says, could you give the right border a touch up? Right border touch up, okay. Uh, I like how the left has some streaky strokes. Can you get some of that on the right? Yeah, I can try. I think I, I was trying. Got to get the brush pretty dry to do that. So I'll see what I can get going here. Let's see if I can get the brush like really dry. Too dry. Let's get some more paint. The old dry brush technique. Sometimes you just get what you get. We can give it some additional variation. Hopefully that helps a little bit, Quinch. I think it looks pretty good. Oh, good. Thank you, Quinch. It's one of those things like it's tough to uh, to force it. You can try to split the bristles a little bit and that kind of stuff, but yeah, I think that's a it's an improvement. Awesome. Well, I hope you love this, man. It was so much fun to do. I, I, like I said, I had this sort of like film noir look in mind. So thanks for giving me a chance to play around with it. Let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit. See the whole thing at once. There we go. Yeah. yeah it turned out pretty good. All right, let's see if we can. go awesome uh quench press says i was not expecting the noir thing but i like it thanks man i'm glad you like it yeah like as soon as you start talking about this i was like oh i want to do this like like i use paint but like india ink blotch thing around the outside and i think it really kind of helps draw you into the illustration you know so it seemed like it was right for this char 